let us see the new feature in C plus plus eleven that is multi threading feature. So moving to the next slide, here we will be seeing what is multi threading and when did this multi threading came into arise. So multi threading it arise in C plus plus eleven and what is this multi threading? In case of multi threading, you can create multiple threads in order to perform multiple task so earlier in c and c++ we need to use this posix thread which is also called as p thread library so you might be knowing what is this posix thread that is p thread library so this is this was the way in case of c and c++ in order to create the thread and there we are the portability issues of using this posix threads with the languages so in case of the c++ 11 therefore this necessity of this multi threading came and this multi threading feature is fulfilled in c++ 11 so therefore you don't need to use this posix thread uh, there came up multi threading feature in c++ 11 and therefore you don't need to use all away from p thread you don't need to use the p thread so now we will see more about how to create this threads multiple threads in c++ 11 so with the default main thread that is a main function we can create additional thread by creating the object of this std scope resolution thread so we will see what does this point means so we know that in case of c or c++ whenever the entry starts from the main function so this main function itself is the default main thread will be running for that now in c++ 11 by this multi threading feature in addition to this default main thread that is the main function you can create more threads in case of c++ 11 as this feature is provided multi threading feature is provided how you can create more threads by creating the object of this what is this std scope resolution thread it is the class itself this class is defined in the header file that is hash include and within the triangle bracket you have to give this name of the header file that is thread in this header file this class is defined that is thread class is defined and you can use its related function while creating the threads so this is how you have to create uh, the thread you have to create simply the object of this class that is thread class in that manner your thread will be created so each object is associated with the single thread and hence if multiple objects then there will be multiple threads it's simple to say that whenever you create the object of this thread class then one thread will be created if you create multiple objects of this thread class then multiple threads you can create so this is how it works so therefore a steady scope resolution thread what it is it's a thread class and its related functions they are defined in the thread dot header file and so, so therefore you have to include this hash include in within this triangle bracket you have to give this thread so moving to the next slide we'll see more about this thread how to create this thread in c plus plus 11 so the same thing which i told we need to create the object of the class that is std scope resolution thread that is a class we have to create the object of this class and what we have to pass here we have to pass the call pass the callback to the constructor that is we need to pass the executing code to be called so how to create thread in c++ 11 so this is the class which is present when you when you include your hash include in within the triangle bracket thread you can use this class you simply create an object of this thread class and in that object you have to pass the callback so we know whenever we create any object of any class then its constructor will be called so in that manner when we create an object of this thread class so in that object while creating the object we have to simply pass the callback so that when the so in that case the constructor of this class will be called and the callback will be passed to that constructor so we know what is the callback it is the executing code to be called now as soon as when this thread will be created then since you have created what you have done you have created the object of this thread class and how you have created the object by passing the callback while creating the object now once you are done completing with running this instruction that is creating the object of the thread class and passing the callback in that case after that only the thread will be created so as soon as the thread object is created 
then the thread will be started and what it, when the thread gets started what will happen it will simply execute the code in the callback so already you pass this callback when you created the thread object so once you are done creating the thread object then the thread will be created and it will be executing your callback so that is what i have mentioned here in this slide now also we will see here further how to create the threads in C++ 11. We will be also seeing many programs here in the presentation as well as we will be also writing the program and we will be executing on the code block IDE to understand more better. So moving to the next slide. There are three different ways in order to create the thread in C++ 11. So these are the three different ways by which you can simply create the thread. So first of all, we know how to create a thread. As I mentioned, we have to simply create an object of the STD scope resolution thread class. And as I told, when we are creating the object, what we are supposed to pass, we are supposed to pass the callback. So by three different ways, your callback can be created. How? The, by the first way, that is by passing the function pointer. This is the first way you can create the thread. The second way is by passing the function object. And the third way is by using the lambda functions. So we will be seeing all these three different ways in order to create the thread in C++11. We'll see its example here in presentation and we will also see the program on the IDE. So let's move on to the next slide. So this is the node point. So whenever you are using the thread, what all things comes into account. So any thread you can wait for other thread to complete its execution. How? by calling the join on that thread object. So you might be knowing what is this join function if you have studied what is this thread if you have used this thread. So simply quickly revising about the join function. So suppose uh, you are in your main function. As I told you for the main function, the main thread will be executed. And in this main function, that is a main thread is running. In that case, you want to create a new thread. So what you will do, you simply create an object of std scope resolution thread, right? You'll create a new thread object. And then in that case, the new thread will be created. And then this main thread want this new thread to complete its execution till that time the main thread want to wait. So in that case, the main thread will call the join function on that new thread so that the main function will be waiting till the new thread completes its execution. This is what importance of using the join function. If the main thread don't call join function, that means the main thread will not wait for new thread to complete its execution. So in that case, what will happen? The main thread is also running and new thread also is running. But suppose the main thread has completed its execution earlier, then it will not bother about your new thread. It will simply exit. And in that case, the crash can also occur because your main from main thread only your new thread got created. And then your new thread is running still and your main thread got exited. So in that case, the haphazard results can occur. So you have to also make sure that you call the join function. Whenever you create any new thread, you have to call the uh, uh, join function for that new thread so that you have to wait for that new thread to complete this execution before your program exits. Now we will see also the examples that will make more clear. Now, let us see, as I told you, there are three different ways. That is by passing the function pointer. In that manner, you can create a thread in C++11. Another is by passing function object. And the third one is by using lambda function. We'll see each of them. So that is by, first we'll see by passing the function pointer. How the syntax of the code will be there. How to create an object by that way. So let's see by the first way to create thread. That is by passing the function pointer. So in that case, here is your main function. You can see here int main. And what you are doing here, you can see as I told you how to create a thread in C11. You have to simply create an object of this class as STD scope resolution thread. So, for if you want to uh, simply create an object of this class, you have to include the header file for this thread. So, here I have not mentioned in this example in presentation, I have covered all those uh, code. Uh, specific all instructions we will be seeing in code block IDE that will be running itself. This is just a snippet of code to make you explain how what will be the syntax when you create your thread, how to create your thread object by three different ways. So one of the ways by passing the function pointer in your main function you're creating this, you can see here 
std scope resolution thread is there you are this is a class you are creating the object the name of the object is thread obj right and what you are passing you are passing func what is this func you can see here this is a func this is one one function named as func and you have to define this function i have not defined here this is just to explain you the syntax so you have to define that func so what as i told you when you create a thread, thread object you have to pass the callback so this is a callback this is a function pointer this is how you can do so when this function will be called func will be called so you can see here once this thread object will be created after executing this first line then your thread uh, thread will be created and then once the thread is created then this callback that is this function will be called that is this function will be called and you can do any instruct you can run any instructions within this function depending upon your requirement then you can see in the next line what i'm doing this thread object which i have created i'm calling the join function as i told you in the earlier slide what is the importance of join function since you can see this is a main function so therefore one default main thread will be running right now you are creating one more thread of thread by simply creating an object of this class right so one new thread is created now this thread when it will be execute then this new thread will be created now your this function is running this thread is running then in that case it can happen that you don't mention this join function then since there are no instruction or uh, functions comes to the end actually and simply returns zero your main function will complete its execution and still this new thread actually that is thread object is still something is there in this function which you are doing you are running some loop actually or you are giving some uh, sleep time or so anything you are running which is taking more time so in that case a main function will execute faster than this function so this will simply execute faster and it will exit but still this function is running so in that case crash can occur so in order to avoid the crash you have to give this join that means the new thread whatever new thread you create you have to always call the join on that that means your this main thread will be waiting first of all this thread object that is the new thread to complete its execution it completes in execution in the sense whatever the code is there here till it completes this execution this main thread will wait it will not exit this is how this works so this is one of the way that is by simply passing the function pointer you can see we can create this thread in c++ 11 now i will also cover the program on the id show you how to create a thread by first way we will see on the id also let's see the second way first on the presentation now second way to create a thread is how to create the sec, uh, thread by simply passing the function object so what is this function object you might be knowing if you 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 are aware of c++ so in case of the function object the syntax is in this manner first of all whenever function object that means there will be your class present and in that class you will be having the operator by this syntax you can see this is a operator this is a class test right and in public access specifier this operator is there and this opening round bracket closing round bracket is there right and you are and one input argument is there that means opening uh, round bracket closing round bracket and the definition here whatever you have to do within this operator you can do you can run a for loop anything you can do so this is a syntax of the function object so this is this you will be having and uh, how to create a thread by using passing this function object so here is my main function you can see so i am creating the object of this thread class you can see by the name thread obj and what i'm passing here in while creating the object you can see i am giving the name of the class test and i'm using round bracket uh, there is opening round bracket and closing round bracket so therefore this operator this will be called and whatever code you run within this will be executed so this class test is this class itself and since you are giving this opening round bracket closing round bracket therefore this op it will search for this operator opening and round that is function operator it is which operator it is this operator is showing that this is for function operator so this is uh, this is your function this uh, this opening uh, round bracket closing round bracket represents a function so therefore this will be called actually and whatever code you mention will be executed so this is the second way 
in order to create a thread object that is by passing the function object therefore the name is called as function object so you can see i'm creating the uh, thread object by passing function object and then on this thread object default you have to also call the join function this is mandatory you have to give the join so that your main thread will wait till your new thread complete its execution it does not that means it will not terminate actually it will not exit it will not exit it will wait till this new thread completes its execution so this is how to create a new thread by the second way now the third way to create thread as i told by using the lambda function so the main function what i am doing you can see i am creating the thread object in this manner giving the name of thread object and what i am passing here i am passing the lambda function so you can see the syntax of lambda function is you opening square bracket closing square bracket like this and opening round bracket closing round bracket here you can mention what input arguments are there Dep depending upon the requirement here then nothing is there just we have we are displaying a message so therefore within this curly braces within this lambda function definition what i'm giving i'm simply displaying a single message in lambda function you can run a for loop anything you can do depending upon the requirement so this is how the third way to create a thread by using this lambda function and then next line what we are doing on this thread object we are calling the join we want the main thread to wait till this new thread completes its execution and then return zero so th these are the ways to create the thread in c++ 11 now let's see the program and execution for all these three ways that is by passing the function pointer passing the function object and by using the lambda function